Welcome back. Today, I am hearing Audio Slave for the first time. Thus far, I have heard Chris Cornell in Temple of the Dog, Soundgarden, and also in a solo acoustic cover. And you guys said this should be next on the list. So today we are watching the official video for the song, Like a Stone. I love the simplicity of this song and I know it's not simple musically but it just it's so easy to pull out that vocal line and I love that because as I've mentioned before having heard Chris Cornell's voice in different settings there is a quality to his voice that oh golly there's this depth and richness in his sound that is so beautifully balanced and so beautifully complemented by that forward placement. So it just feels so full and yet he has the dexterity to move and shift and do so many things with his voice because of it. We're going back. Uh, so far, not too much has happened in the video itself, so I might close my eyes a little bit just so I can really focus in on what I'm hearing. Just that very first sound. There was a specific sound we got from a lot of singers during this time that felt so effortless, so relaxed. I think we had a lowered soft palate. There was a beautiful utilization of air pressure, not a huge big breath, not a ton of power and exhalation coming out, at least not in the beginning here. And so it just feels, it adds to that simplicity. Um, it feels very casual. It for me, enables me to sort of tune into the lyrics a little bit better. So I just, I don't know. I love that sound. Let me back it up. You can sort of hear in his pronunciation how he doesn't overly spread if I were to say these words on a just in the first two words alone I would make a pretty big shift in my posturing in order to change the sound to get these different vowels out but he's doing so much work with just his tongue positioning to change the vowels so that he's keeping the space the same throughout there's this this rounded quality to his sound, which also helps adding in that richness and that depth that we hear. I 
love that there was separation between the pages because a lot of singers would typically sort of scoop into that when you have a big interval jump like that. And by allowing that separation, he just sort of attacked from above so that it just landed right right on the note instead of scooping into it. There's no right or wrong. I mean, I scoop into notes all the time. A lot of singers do. But when you're making such specific choices and you're using such precision in a song, I like that he maintained that despite that interval jump. mix is just gold. It's so good. Uh, I didn't mention the texture before, but I think one of the qualities I've always loved hearing in his voice is we get this grit, we get some added texture throughout, but it's not, um, it doesn't come and go. I think it's consistent and that's why I like it so much because it really does feel like it's part of his voice and so we can amp it up just a little bit here and there if he wants that added effect or that added texture, but it's it's constant. It's a through line in everything I've heard from him thus far. Um, yeah, his mix though. These notes just sound so well balanced. We've got that forward placement to keep that brightness and that bite and that little bit of edge, but they're rich. They feel really grounded, really well supported. When he was just singing patiently, you can kind of hear the shift in placement. One more time. Hopefully you can hear it. Pay. It started very far forward and then we got a lot more backspace toward the end of that word. he said the sky I think that's where it sort of hit me obviously I know this is a music video but when you are watching him sing at least in the one live video I saw he has the most relaxed face ever and so it's really cool to hear when he makes these bigger jumps when he creates different kinds of space in his oral cavity because a lot of us would show that on our faces and he doesn't do that so much. Obviously, you'll see, you know, the occasional brow lift. We're getting the soft palette lift usually at the same time. But for the most part, it's just so relaxed despite the various jumps he has going on and the different colors that he's incorporating or introducing. I was there so Last 
time, I promise. So the difference between, oh golly, what was the word? On or long? Um, and then the next word, I have to listen again, sorry. Okay, so with on, you're getting sort of that French nasal vowel, the soft palate lowered, and then the tongue pretty high, the root of the tongue pretty high. So going from that, this slightly more muted sound, and then he opens it instantly right after that. So you can just hear this huge shift. Obviously it still sounds like him, but instead of saying the word on and allowing a lot of space, he's really just digging into the colors that he can create there. And so we've got one sound followed by another, and I just really liked that last time. So brilliant that whole section his timbre that edge that brightness that ping in his voice matched the the accompaniment so beautifully like the music that was happening underneath the vocals it just it blended so beautifully and then as soon as we got that shift that transition again he opened it up he changed his placement and gave us a completely new sound and again his I mean this is a great example of just knowing where your money notes are and using them at the right time he's got an incredible range we all know that but when it comes to just making elevating a song I guess that's the that's the whole point is like if you know the right key you know the right notes you know exactly what to do at the right time with your vocals it just adds so much character to a song. And right here, even though we're getting repetition with this chorus, he's changing it up and then he's picking 
specific moments to do some sort of improv or ad lib in order to highlight some of the best parts of his voice. more time it's so soulful mention about the song that was really appealing to me throughout is it definitely had this melancholy feel to it but there were moments of like tonal resolution that were just so satisfying and really I don't know maybe even just a little hopeful um so that it didn't feel like it was just this sort of yeah, melancholy song throughout. Like there was sort of a rise and fall um, when you were listening to the melody. And I don't know, it, there were moments where you can kind of have like those little goosebump moments because that paired with some really exciting vocals just led to a great experience overall. Um, I had no idea how connected so many of these bands were from this time. Um, I don't believe I have heard Rage Against the Machine and now that I've heard three of their players, um, I feel like I'll, I'll need to do that soon to hear their vocalist. But yeah, I just, I will never be able to fully articulate what, just what a brilliant vocalist he was. So... That is it for today. Thank you guys so much for this recommendation and for watching with me, and hopefully I will see you next time.